This is the EOS Ergot Organic Synthesizer by Blue Lantern Modules. This is a semi-modular synthesizer with two oscillators, a mixer section, subharmonic generator, noise section, two envelope generators, blade style filter, two LFOs, and stereo delay. Now the synthesizer comes with five cables that are decently long. An AC adapter, which has swappable plug area for easy swapping, depending on what region you're in. Though the cable's not all that long, but you could always just get an extension. It's not really a big deal. Or you could just get another AC adapter with the same specs. And then we'll notice on the sides of the synth, we have this nice angle to it so we can have better access to the panels when it's sitting on a table like a normal synthesizer, or if we want it flat, it comes with extra panels that we can swap out to make it nice and flat like the rack behind it. The EOS is a larger than Euro rack sized semi-modular synthesizer. It's based on multiple Blue Lantern modules all working together, interpatched behind the scenes, making us a full semi-modular synthesizer. So if you wanted to actually build this in Eurorack, which would make it smaller, longer, and much more expensive, with the corresponding Blue Lantern modules, you would need two Lunar Modulation Lab VCOs, the Subharmonics Generator, the CSVCO Pitch Noise Generator, two Ape Accented Percussion Envelope Generators, Parallax, the Blades Filter, two Mini Digital LFOs, and the Dwarf Star Stereo Delay, not to mention all the cross-modulation and panning added. Now, aside from being a really great tuned lead synthesizer or baseline lead rhythm, chords, anything you want to add, effects, this is also really great for creating percussive hits because we have this pop here, we have the noise, we have the sub-generators, and we have the percussive envelopes that are really snappy and short for great percussive hits. And then we have that delay to change things up along with the panning, where you could even just pan something hard right with some heavy positive voltage, something like that. So you could get a nice full range of sounds from just the synthesizer. And I put a little piece of music at the end together using only the synth for the drums, the lead, the bass, vocals running through it, some high arpeggios, and some chords. So stick around for that at the end of the video. So first, do a super quick walkthrough of the whole synthesizer, and then I'll go through each part separately. So first, we have our two oscillators with FM input with attenuverters, sync input for a certain amount of hard to soft sync, mod input with internally routed envelope or LFO, we have our pulse width with pulse width modulation attenuator for the input, sine wave cross mod between the two oscillators, sample and hold cross mod between the two oscillators with linear or exponential switch, and there's also an input at the top. Coarse and fine tune knobs, you have a lock to lock your coarse tune so it's easier to tune. The second oscillator is an octave up. We have a wave selection button here to select your secondary waveforms and a select wave input. We have double saw output, sine wave output, a reset input, our triangle core triangle wave output, saw wave output, even wave output, pulse wave output with the pulse width modulation. First oscillator has corona output, second oscillator has sinusoidal output. Here's our FM input, full proactive input, which is internally routed to the second one if it's left unpatched. Sync input, our X mod input, which says it has the sample and hold internally routed. Pulse width modulation input, pulse train output for a special pulse train waveform. And we have our saw pulse wave select for the first oscillators, which brings us to our mixer section where we have our saw and pulse waves for oscillator one and two, and then our secondary waveforms for one and two, which are corresponding to the lit up LEDs. Then we have our subharmonic generator corresponding with oscillator two. We have our white noise and shift register noise input, full audio input volume knob, tune for the shift register noise, full proactive input for shift register noise, white noise output, shift register noise output. Then we have our trigger input, aux input, 
which goes into our mixer section basically at full volume. And it will be cut by the audio to filter knob here. We have our CV level here for filter impact corresponding to this knob here. We have our sample and hold random, which is triggered every time we get a trigger input. It is sampling the white noise and sending out a sample and hold here, which is also going to those X mods. We have a CV accent for the amp input with the corresponding knob here. We have a drive input, which corresponds with this knob. We have a trigger sync for LFO1, FM modulation for LFO1, trigger sync for LFO2, FM modulation for LFO2, LFO1 output, LFO2 output, our main monitor output, outputs left and right. We have our pan input, our time CV input, our envelope two output CV for the cutoff of filter one and CV for the cutoff of filter two. We have attack and decay for our filter and amp envelopes with a attack sustain release or just trigger attack release envelopes. We can set them long or short. We can repeat them, which fires them every time the repeat oscillator blinks here. This is for envelope one and envelope two, and we control our repeat speed with these knobs. We have the level CV, which controls that input. The filter envelope, which is the amount of envelope being sent to the filter. We have our pan CV attenuator knob here. Our depth of our envelope to our amp, our VCA open or close, and the accent amount here. And we have the low pass filter section with a overdrive and wave folding. Then we have our first filters cutoff here, resonance here, low pass, band pass, high pass, cross fading here. FM input from the filter envelope, positive and negative. Then we have filter two, which is designated the path via this knob here. We can control the cutoff with this knob, or we can just shift the filter with this switch here a little bit with this knob now. We can apply LFO to both filters, and this is the FM envelope amount to the second filter. We then have a low pass choice for the second filter or a notch filter for the second filter. And now we have our digital LFOs with many different waveforms as seen on screen now. And we have our normal waveforms and our alt waveforms, which are much more complex. We can change the range, which is our range of speed. The skew, which kind of leans and skews the waveforms, kind of how Pamela's new workout works with those waves. If you think about the width with a triangle wave to turn it into a sawtooth wave, something like that. And we have our general frequency, which turns up and down the frequency. We have the same thing for our second LFO, except this one also has a level output for the output here, whereas the first one doesn't have that attenuator. And we also have the alt switch for that. This is then routed to the delay, which is controlled by this overall effects knob here and the toggle switch with the light the light's green and the toggle switches to the right it is on and this turns it on and off or we could go to the momentary mode where it's always off and it's only on when we hold the effects button which the light does not correlate to the momentary mode. We have our delay time, our repeat amounts, our CV amount for our time input, and our spread amount, which basically adjusts the time in opposite directions for the left and the right, which spreads our delay. And then we have our main master output, our on off switch. And I didn't mention we have our free flowing LFOs or our trigger sync on for the LFOs which will then work with the trigger sync. And that is the super quick walkthrough of the Ergot Organic Synthesizer. Now let's get this guy plugged in and give it a walkthrough. So let's get this guy powered on. And I'm gonna plug into the main outputs here, which are one and two here on the right side of the synthesizer. There's also the monitor output, which works with headphones and you can play more with your main output volume. Now, if we have a full synthesizer here, except for the pitch values coming in and the gate values or triggers coming in, and those are easily identified on the module with the only two inputs with this big silvery circle around them. Volper octave, which normals to the second oscillator if you don't have anything plugged in, and the trigger, which fires our envelope generators, among other things. So let's plug that in, and I'll start the walkthrough. Okay, I have my pitch input going into the Volper Active now, and the trigger going into the trigger input. And I just have this connected to my key step, connected to my DAW, so I can play notes or a sequence, and we'll hear that. Let's turn off the delay for right now, and let's hear these oscillators and how they all mix. I'm gonna turn everything down first, 
so we could hear just the first oscillator. Now let's open up the VCA here and we could hear our oscillator, which is our saw wave right now. And we could choose between a saw and a pulse wave for the first waveform in our oscillators on our mixer section, which we'll get into in a second. So we could switch between our saw and our pulse. And we have our pulse width. And we have a pulse width input for modulation right here which is not internally patched. I wish it was internally patched to the LFO, but that's okay. Let's just patch it. And you see with the saw wave, we don't get any change. And there's the linear wavy switch here, which for certain waveforms, it changes it from straight to wavy, straight, and wavy. Now this doesn't affect our pulse, of course, that we still have being modulated right now. And now we have all the other waveforms that we can mix in with that saw or pulse with this second knob in the mixer, which first we have a sine wave. and we could change the waves with this wave select button. We'll notice that the last waveform is a little bit different on the two oscillators. So you have some a little bit of waveform fun with that, then they work really nice together. And you'll see that at the end with one of the patches, if you look close. So let's select the other waves. Triangle wave, the double sawtooth wave, the even waveform, which is adjustable by the wavy linear, along with the double, which is affected by the wavy linear, the even, and then we have the pulse train, which is not affected by the wavy or linear, and this is just a unique pulsed waveform that gives us a little bit of a chordy sort of sound. And then there's the corona waveform, which complements the sinus waveform that's in oscillator 2. And let's hear what that sounds like. Here's our sine wave. And you see that the sinus is a bit more pronounced of a wave than the corona. But when I get these in tune with each other, they add a really nice timbre together. Now we also have the lock function on both oscillators here. And that locks us to specific coarse tuning. So the coarse tuning knobs don't do anything. And it's just the fine tuning knobs that you have to adjust. So it makes it easier to get this in tune with itself. And we'll notice that the second oscillator is a little bit higher pitch. It's an octave higher than the first one. And that is because the second oscillator is being pulled for the subharmonics generator, which we'll see here in the mixer, which I'll just go into right now while we're here, and then we'll circle back to the rest of the oscillator. So we have our subharmonic mix. Let me just turn on oscillator two. So we have our first sub, our second sub, and this one gives us kind of chordy sounds. Third, and our fourth, which gives us a nice deep, heavy sub. Now let's add those saw waves in. We have a nice heavy waveform. Now the mixer section is kind of continued, you see, with these two white knobs here in the shape section. But I'll go over that when we go into the filter, and I'll just consider that part of that section. But it's kind of part of the mixer section. Now back to the oscillators, we have built-in cross-modulation. And we have this nice little pop knob here, which gives us a nice percussive pop every time that the envelope is triggered. And it's great for percussive leads or even synth sounds. And let's hear that while I turn it up and down. 
it doesn't have that sharp poppy click to it that the pop adds. Now the first thing of cross modulation is the sine x cross mod, which sends the sine wave from one oscillator to the other. Now it's a little bit confusing because you would think that turning this knob up would affect this oscillator, but in fact, this is affecting the amount that we're sending to the other oscillator. So if I turn oscillator one off, we will not hear any of that. It's not doing anything, but we hear it in oscillator one. And you could find really nice sweet spots for that FM modulation. And we can cross mod each other on each other by adding it on the first oscillator as well. And that gives you some real crazy stuff. And then we also have this mod input here, which is internally patched from the envelope. And note that we can override the inputs of these with the inputs above the oscillator. So all these can be overridden from that internal patching. So for one, we can mod it with the envelope. So any time the envelope is fired, it's also sending the envelope into our oscillator, which is great for percussive, not so much melodic leads. Set it to both. Or we could also mod them with the LFO-1. And last but not least, we have the X mod here, which introduces sample and hold, which is kind of behind the scenes in this whole synthesizer, and then introduces that sample and hold to the X mod. And the sample and hold is clocked. You'll see here on this clock here, which doesn't always track on video because it clicks so fast, but anytime the envelope is fired, it changes our pitch in linear X a little weaker than exponential and it doesn't have quite as much effect and with the linear we'll kind of stay in tune still and it'll just change quickly and then kind of snap back and we could barely even really hear it but we go to exponential and it's like we're just getting random cv into each oscillator we have the sync input, which works really well if you have the pulse from one into the other. And the amount of sync, or the kind of hardness or softness of the sync, is determined by the knob here. So I'm going to throw this first oscillator kind of out of pitch, and I'm going to turn the sync up. notice with the sync it doesn't really do too much when you're lower than the pitch of the first oscillator and let's turn the lock off on this actually and we can really play with that sync now pull the LFO in
Add in some cross modulation into the second oscillator. Let's mix some waveforms here. Let's go sine. And then we also have the FM input. Which is similar to the sine cross mod, except it's just whatever we want to plug into it. And it has the attenuverter, so we could go in the opposite direction as the sine X. And then we also have the trigger input to select our waveform here. So I'm going to plug in the pulse from the second oscillator and turn all those off and have it just affecting the waveform of the first oscillator. Or I could do the pulse train, which gives us a little bit more random generation that's a little bit faster. And that is the Lunar Modulation Lab style dual oscillator system in the EOS synthesizer. And now we kind of covered the mixer here, where we have control of our saw and pulse, along with our secondary waveforms as lit up by the LEDs, and then our subharmonic generators. Now what I didn't mention is the bottom section of the mixer here, which has our noise and audio to filter. Now our audio to filter just is kind of like a master volume. If you want to cut everything coming from this section off, you turn audio to filter off. So let's turn the oscillator off here and we'll see we have this switch here for white noise and shift register noise. Let's go to white noise and turn the noise up. And we just have regular noise. But we also have shift register noise, which creates noise from a really fast shift register going. But with this, we can play with the tune of it by kind of how quick the shift register updates. And it's really great for kind of video gamey explosion sounds with an envelope in there, of course, or any other kind of cool noise pitch based effects if you want to add a little melody to it or something anything you want it's really cool we have the cv shift input here which kind of acts full per octave i believe to our pitch here and then we have our shift register noise output here along with our white noise output i'm going to go back to our white noise here so we can get the full spectrum of pitch and i'm going to add in oscillator one again and this brings us to our envelope generator section, where we have our filter envelope generator and our amp envelope generator, which are both triggered by the trigger input here. Okay, so I have a sequence coming into the EOS right now. I'll call it the EOS, I guess. And this is triggering our filter envelope and our amp envelope. Now, right now, let's not worry about the filter. Let's focus on the amp envelope. First, we have our attack and decay. And right now it is set into trigger AD mode. So every time it receives a trigger, it'll do the full attack and decay. But note, it is pretty short. Because it is for mostly a percussion generator. But it gives us a nice exponential curve to things, which is fun. Let's go back to long. So we have the short and long that we could hear. And we have the gate AR section, which turns this into an attack, sustain, release envelope. 
So it's just a pulse with them both off versus being just clicks or nothing with them off with the trigger mode. And then we have our pan input, which is interesting in the amp envelope section. I think it's just kind of where it fit. But this, we can apply an LFO into the pan input here. And this knob will control the pan amount added to your synth. Then we have the depth, which is the amount that the amp envelope is sending to the VCA. We then have our VCA control, which the amp is being sent to the VCA, and here's kind of our open close for the VCA. We can go to about here with it still being closed, which is nice if you want a little bit more oomph to your percussive hits that are just a little too quiet. But then after that, we open up our VCA, but fine with it closed right now with the envelope being sent to it. Now this switch is for the VCF and this switch is for the LFO. Let's not worry about that just yet. And we have the accent knob, which is applied from the CV accent input, which I'll put the LFO into it. And it just is an additional accent to our VCA here. And see that the accent is tied to the depth as well. So you see, that gives it some extra oomph. Now this brings us to the filter section, which the first part is kind of tied in with Mixer, where we have our drive, which gives us some overdrive. And at this dot here, we're at our normal volume. And then we have a wave folder in here, which gives us our normal wave shape and folded. Then we can use the drive here to really push the wave folder more to fold it even more intensely. Now this is just two sine waves and some noise. So that's the sine waves. And here's the more intense folded waveform that we can get. And now we have the filter section where we have our main cutoff and our resonance. And we get to set the type low pass, band pass, or high pass. Let's go back to low pass. And we have the FM amount, which is our filter envelope applied to the FM knob here, which applies to our filter cutoff. And we can apply a positive amount to that. Or we could do a negative amount. And then we have our path knob here, which works exactly the same as the path knob on blades. It goes from fully counterclockwise to controlling just filter one, and filter two is bypassed. Then at 12 noon, it routes into filter one and two equally, so it kind of splits our signal. And then in series, it goes through filter one and then through filter two. And right now, I have it just as the notch filter for filter two. And 
And then we have our shift knob here, which is our cutoff frequency for filter two. But right now it's set at notch with this switch here and we could switch it to low pass filter. And then we also have the FM application to filter to. And the mod, which actually applies to both filters, because we'll hear it with just VCF1 on, the mod is LFO1. And it applies to the cutoff of both of the filters. And that is the filter section, and that brings us to the LFO section here, which we have two of basically the digital mini LFO by Blue Lantern, where we have multiple different waveforms here, from a ramp up to a ramp down to a square wave or a pulse wave to a triangle. to a sine, and to more complex waveforms, I believe a rolling sample and hold sort of waveform, and then random. And then we have the alt waveforms, which give us much different waveforms on here that are much more complex, and due to the digital nature, they can be more complex and more unique waveforms that we can modulate and adjust the time to. And skew. And the difference between LFO 1 and 2 is just the level knob on LFO 2. LFO 2 does not internally route to anything. That's why we have the level here for the output that we could route to anything in the system. And when this switch is switched down, we have control over the LFO trigger sync for LFO 1 and 2, along with frequency modulation for each. And this leads us to the FX section, or the stereo delay. Turn it on when the light is green and the toggle is to the right. And let's turn up the effects knob. We can adjust the repeat amount. So we have just single repeats right now. And we can go full on long tails here. Let's stop the sequence. So you can see when we turn the time way down, we have a long repeating echo or delay. And we also have our spread, which spreads the left and right delays, and it sends one to be a slower delay time and the other to be a faster delay time, and does vice versa depending on which way you turn it. And the time CV are equal at 12 o'clock noon. For the time, we could go to chorus-like effects. Or a spring reverb type effect when the repeat is up higher. go pretty long delays that kind of break the delay chip a little bit especially when we spread it and you can hear that digital degradation in the chip from that longer delay time that kind of really pushes it to its limits let's stop the sequence
So we can hear when I turn it to a certain level, it really starts to break it and we get that nice crunchy goodness from that delay. And that'll just go on forever if I leave that repeat up. And last but not least, we have the time CV, which controls both times equally. It does not control the spread. And this is the attenuator for that. And we just have our master volume. Now, if I turn off the delay, it should keep going because the delay has the nice tail to it. It just stops picking up new inputs into the delay, but the repeat still is affecting it. And I believe that covers pretty much everything on the Ergot Organic Synthesizer. Now let's take a listen to some music I made using only this synthesizer. Nothing else other than some vocals that are routed in through the aux. So it is running through the filter, the panning, the delay. Now note in this piece of music that Nothing is done in post at all. This is just all the raw audio from the EOS. So you could hear it really firsthand without any sort of compression or EQ or panning anything. The only thing I adjusted is some volume of fading things in and fading things out. And that is it. Oh, mm -hmm. 